Gruesome Magazine. Hello, once again, I'm your host, Doc Rotten, and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the release of theatrical horror films. Oh my gosh, 2023 is here, and we have a whole slew of films lined up throughout the next 12 months, and we are starting with week one with Megan. Can't wait to do it each week. My co-host, Christopher G. Moore, Brian W. Smith, and I will take a look at various spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings. Yay! Uh, tonight we are reviewing, like I said, Megan, box office smash that it is. Yes, 30, 30 million. That's amazing. They said twenty. They made thirty. A boom. <laughs> All right. Uh, introducing the group crew, starting off with award-winning filmmaker Christopher G. Moore. How you doing, sir? Well, you know, you know, Doc. All I gotta say is. Tell me your dreams, and I will dream them too. I'm so glad I'm on this podcast with you. Uh, uh, okay, you that go. was that was the second creepiest song <laughs> ever. Like, you can, you can listen to it on iTunes if you want to. <laughs> Not my version, but <laughs> <laughs> also joining is award-winning screenwriter Brian W. Smith. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's no, insane, no cat, right? No catchy tunes. It's insane, it's, right? It's, yeah, <laughs> Perfect. He's feeling like titanium right about now. You know? uh, <laughs> uh, I'll be back. That's what I'll say. That, because that has nothing to do with it, but it kind of does. All right. Uh, we're going to get into our review of Megan. We're going to start off with our first reaction. That first reaction will be spoiler free. Uh, then we'll get into a discussion about the film. We will get into the spoilers and oh, what fun we will have. And then we'll wrap things up with our score of one to five. And our favorite scene, can't wait to pick that one out. And, of course, we hope you enjoy not only this review, but many others we have on the site. And if you do, please hit the like, subscribe, share with the friend buttons, and help us reach our goal of 5,000 subscribers. Only you can help us do that. And only you can help us find more fans like us and you. Yes! Hmm? All right, let's get into things. We're going to dive into the card and then get into the review. All right. I am um, uh, Megan, uh, 2023 Universal Pictures, also Blumhouse and Atomic Monster, available in theaters beginning January 3rd, 2023, the first film of the year and the first horror film of the year. Synopsis is a robotics engineer of a toy company builds a lifelike doll that begins to take on a life of its own. Hmm. Directed by Gerard Johnstone, uh, written by Akila Cooper, uh, from a story by James Wan. The cast includes Allison Williams, Violet McGraw, uh, Amy Donald, Jenna Davis, uh, Ronnie Cheng, Brian Jordan Alvarez, Jen Van Epps, Lori Dungy. Yes, yes, yes. All right, let's find out what we think. Brian, you're up first. What was your first impression of Megan? Uh, it's cute. It's decent script, and uh, it's PC thirteen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I thought it was it was actually you know pretty good. It was it was a little more grounded and serious than I expected it to be from all the promotions and marketing. I thought the marketing was you know pretty good. It's it's a it's a box office smash as you said, but I thought the um, the Megan character was a very interesting uh, character. I would have liked a little more. A little more of the, I guess, the gaslighty elements of it. it. Had that sort of like domestic thriller from the '90s type of thing. Like it had that potential. Like they could, they could basically remake Hannah Rocks the Cradle with Megan as the whole throughout the whole oh, movie. Wow. Okay, I thought that would that would have been interesting. Of just a little more uh, torment, you know, psychological torment with her creator in the film. Because um, I, I thought those moments were the strongest. Before it goes, of course batch of crazy as you've seen in the trailers but overall i thought it was it's fine uh it is kind of like a remake of the child's play remake um i heard jeremy johns actually say that on youtube and i agree with him it's it's similar to the, in that vein i think um but i think this one does a little bit better it, it handles uh certain themes a little bit better and yeah the technology that they use the effects that they use to create megan is interesting i just would have liked to seen a little more um uh less well she's kind of emerges as a villain and that's that's who the character is throughout the whole film rather than seeing like a, a sort of change or an arc or really playing that up but you know they had limited time so that's that's how i look at it maybe in the sequel <laughs> <laughs> maybe. i think they're going to double down sir on the sequel <laughs> uh, i mean all right christopher g moore what was your first impression of megan i thoroughly enjoyed this film 
from beginning to end. And I think it sets its tone from the very beginning. With the I mean, with, with this commercial <laughs> that it felt like the like the Verhoeven from Robocop type stuff, you know, mm. um, it, uh, it, it and I think um, I, and I think throughout it, it it definitely had a campiness to parts of it, but it also had like a series to parts of it. It had a little bit of heart as well. Um, and uh, but also it just had this sort of. I mean, and it also, did, but it also didn't, it didn't, uh, it didn't hold back, you know, because there's, there's kind of char- things that get killed in this movie that you don't normally kill in movies. You worry about that. Um, so yeah, I, I really, I, I, I thought I loved the script. I loved, I mean, I, lo- I loved all the different aspects of it from the, the technology. And I think, yeah, a lot of people are comparing it to Todd's play and, um, I can see that correlation, but I, I don't know. I feel like this has more, <laughs> this has more to do with small wonder than it does child's play the remake. I mean, it's, I, uh, I just, I, I, I hated that child's play remake. I think it's a horrible movie, but I think, I think this is a, a much better and that's my opinion. Um, and I think this is much better. And even though it may be scaled back because, you know, being PG 13, I didn't really miss any of that. You know, I didn't miss the gore and stuff. I still think it was very menacing, the, the things that happened to characters. But I don't know. I just, I was, this, I mean, even though I think some trailers maybe give you certain elements of it, there was other stuff that was very surprising to me that I laughed out loud. The incorporation of music. Uh, and, and that there's a tune that I kind of played off in the very beginning that where they made, it's almost like, it feels like a, like a Disney type thing that would be made for a musical or something. And then there's other things that there's a, you know, music that plays on a piano and other things that plays off of popular tunes that I knew. And I, I just, I don't know. I w- those kind of things were very surprising. And, 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 and also the, as, as that the, uh, the character gets, goes off the rails, it just gets more and more menacing and weird and creepy, you know? And, and, and I agree with Brian. It, it does, does have that kind of like, poison ivy and that rocks a cradle bad seed element that we kind of nineties was very popular for. Um, or the good son. You remember that the good son? Um, oh yeah. So it, wow. It, yes. It, it has those kind of elements that we remember from nineties that maybe Hallmark has gotten into a little bit, <laughs> um, or, or lifetime, I guess. Um, but yeah, oh. I enjoyed, I enjoyed this movie from beginning to end. I laughed so much throughout stuff that would you know just <laughs> i mean just there's stuff where you could tell that they were having fun with even with the characters you know and i won't give anything away but there's a thing with a detective that's very funny the you know there's the 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 guy who's over the 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 company there's some there's a really funny commercial that it's all serious and, they, and there's humor in it i mean there's just so many moments i think just maybe as a filmmaker and as a screenwriter it's like oh man that was actually kind of witty how they did that you know um, but then you have those, there's some really, you know, beautiful moments too, with the, the little girl who was from the last, the hill, Haunting Hill House, who's really great and her interaction. Um, but yeah, but then it's like, I, I also want that little toy at the very beginning. <laughs> I kind of want one of those. <laughs> you want so, uh, but anyway, I, 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 I really have nothing negative to say about this film whatsoever. I just loved it from beginning to end. And I kind of, I don't know. I enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed it too. Uh, it's it's definitely my favorite movie of the year. Well, <laughs> um, nine days in, uh, it's the only movie that <laughs> count. Uh, no, I I I I had a ball. This was so much fun to watch, um, and I what they achieved with this character is so uh, because it feels real but looks fake. It, it really plays on that. You know, that mm-hmm. what, what is the name for that, Christopher? That Uncanny Valley, Uncanny, Uncanny Valley. Valley. You know, it, it, it kind of like owns that. It, it, you know, it says that's what we are, and it really works for this character. And I, it, there are some very dark humor moments in it, um, with her and how she reacts and what she says. It's just, it's chilling and funny at the same time. I, I love it. Now, I will admit, I was wanting something a little bit more akin to basketballs in the face, a la Deadly Friend. Uh, but we kind of get 
hints of that. Um, but what it gave me, I, you know, I kind of, I, I don't begrudge it. I think they made the right choice pulling back to make it PG 13 to get a wider audience, because I think this can appeal. There's, there's elements in the story that appeals to a greater audience, you know, with the, you know, it kind of has something to say about loss and death uh, and it, uh, and uh, you know, raising a child even uh, you know, there are some really deep themes in this layered in that um, really tie our two leads, the, the, uh, the aunt and, and, and the young lady, the young girl um, that makes their relationship, uh, you know, something to root for, even though it's strained greatly. Um, and the reaction that the girl has in the movie um, isn't a typical reaction, but it feels like the kind of reaction that might happen given the situation that she's in. Um, you know, it, it didn't feel false at all. Uh, so that, that's just elements of the story that I think, you know, are underneath that I think really are going to resonate with larger audience. And of course you get, you know, this character doing batshit crazy things. And then it ends in a way I didn't expect, but I'm not surprised by. I loved I, it. <laughs> I loved I, it. I kind of expected that ending. I, there was a point. There was a when point. You in, was when, like, you, when you layer in, hey, this is my my thing from in the first act. I was yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Get into the spoilers. Yeah, there's uh, what uh, what is what would you call it? I got a power loader. No, <laughs> no well, here's a power. I loader. call it Chekhov's robot. Yeah, Chekhov's right. robot. Yeah. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. Like, oh about. yeah, that's coming back. <laughs> yep. And I and, and uh, I realized I think uh, the the one who played is it Caddy, Katie. I'm thinking of Mean Girls. That's similar. To how these <laughs> uh, I think she's the sister of the Black Phone actress, Madeline McGraw. This is Violet McGraw. I saw someone someone post about that, and I was like, "What?" I think it was Madeline. Madeline went, I guess, posted about the Megan trailer and stuff. So that was pretty. That was pretty cool. Yeah, the McGraw sisters taking over. Oh, there's some talented actresses right there. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah. I just getting back to when you were mentioning the 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 loss and grief and stuff like that. I, I thought they really handled a lot of that stuff very well in the script. I was ex I was actually kind of surprised um, how heartfelt it was. And, and I think, you know, if this were sort of like a, it's not, but if it were like an A24 film, I think they could go really even deeper with the oh, themes yeah, and, yeah. and really, f it, it probably would have been a much more subtle robot film, but, you know, it, of course, as it goes towards the ending when things get a little off the rails and I'm like, I don't know, I just felt like things didn't quite, match up to what it was setting up in, in, in the early scenes but yeah. i don't know it, it was it's fine it's it's harmless it's decent it was entertaining for what it was uh but i think um i don't know it, there were there were some strong dramatic moments involved including involving the robot that i thought yeah, you know, yeah when she's not when it. she's not moving you're just wondering what is she thinking is she thinking what's what's going on like i think they could have held on that a little longer but they wanted to get to the dance scene and stuff yeah, yeah. i mean <laughs> even, even when she's hanging there and your face is covered by her hair you're still wondering what she's thinking right yeah um, yeah when she's just is she just processing is she is she, is she already bad it just seemed like she was already bad so i don't know if that was that was the case or you know, what but i think it's just she's just constantly learning well they 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 kind of seeded that with that it's being rushed and they're not done with everything and then then there's a uh maybe a a, a, a toothy malfunction when the dog bites her in the neck <laughs> that maybe maybe, maybe change well, but, her but i think they also i think you know the thing is like i i'm i feel like they had the right balance for me because I, I think if they went to more h3 4 I, I i wouldn't have liked it you know i think you have to have that kind of that balance between like the campiness and the and the seriousness and i think i think also i think i think if anything there is that underlying thing about technology how like we raise kids just taking all this information and then sometimes it makes them turn into like a not sociable type human being and i think that's the Megan character is a good example of that. <laughs> all she mm -hmm. is taking in all this information and she doesn't know how to process it or be sociable around mm -hmm. people, you know? And so, and then you just learn the wrong things. Like we learn about our society right now, how people cuning on and all these things are going on. They yeah. just, all they learn all this crazy crap and they believe it all. And then it is, it, it drives people insane. So yeah. I think hey. there's a, there's a lot of really cool underlying themes in this that I wasn't really expecting. You know, I guess we were just, you know, I went into this, this was above my expectations because it kind of, because it also had a heart to it. I was not expecting that as much mm -hmm. as well. So, 
Yeah, and her influence on Katie uh, as well, you know, because she made Katie, you know, become a not a character you didn't really like for a short bit of time. And I was impressed that they took that they took that route, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and- yeah, they were and, able and to turn that around, and I liked how they handled that as well with that speech. That was a good speech. Well, and I think that's the thing. I think they did a really great job in that. And you also have like the um, the the main sister character who's like, he doesn't want to have responsibilities for things. She wants to do. She's very a very selfish sort of kiddish in some ways as well. You know, well, she doesn't want to just don't play with my toys. <laughs> which I was like, oh damn, I felt called out. <laughs> <laughs> I, felt, I felt a little tacked, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, because if my niece were to come to my house, I'd be like, hey, can I play? No, that's, you can't open. You can't take that out of the box. Um, so I felt kind of called out, but then I was like, okay, but I can see that as well. She doesn't She's. Uh, she doesn't really have that much of attachment. Um, I, didn't, I didn't see much of an arc with her character. I feel like it was, because uh, I mean, Allison Williams, you know, she's, she's a good actress, but I feel like she plays it cold throughout the whole film. It worked for Get Out, but here it's like, you kind of need that extra arc. And I didn't feel the real, like in the end, I'm like, she can't, I don't think she's, she can't keep that kid. She can't keep that. Kid. No, no, <laughs> they can't gotta, that. I mean, they, they have it when she realizes, you know, at the very end, they, they do kind of rush it at the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for me, that worked um, when she realized, I mean, that speech that she gives the Gemma character gives to, to Katie, I think is the arc. I mean, that's the, mm-hmm. the, 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 yeah. the end of the arc. Um, and it also, is is a great arc because it also helps the arc of Katie as well. It helps realize, you know, she realizes what's happening with that, with that, with that speech. So I, I feel it's there, but I agree that it's not very strong. I mean, they, they want to get to the dancing. They, they want to get to the dancing. They want to get Which to. Uh, really didn't make any sense. I don't know if it. I don't know if, how do you felt about it, but it didn't make any sense in the context of the film. <laughs> like I was waiting for it. I was. I knew it was coming, but when it happened, uh, I was like, "Why is this happening? It doesn't really work, or something felt missing." I don't know. I it. it I liked. I mean, like, yeah. yeah I, didn't, did we not get enough of the learning of of Megan learning, or maybe that's missing? Or well, there was a sh- there's a short scene where her dancing with him that we get, but it's not. It's a shot. Prevalent. It's not even it's like a, a shot. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's from um, the trailer, it, but... it needed to be a little bit more of a, a thing that the two of them do to really make it pay off. Yeah. Um, but the promotion itself makes it pay off, and and Ronnie Chang makes it pay off a little bit too. His I didn't have a problem with it. I, I thought he I was enjoyed just the hell out of it. I just it. felt yeah. like she she's a messed up robot kid who's being playful. She's Needed like, oh, more I'm, having, I'm having fun. I, I, <laughs> I, I, this could, person. I would like to see more of it. Actually, I I was really. It, I was expecting more of that. Um, uh, that would be my one thing. I I was wanting her to be a little more playful with the desk. Um, maybe is. that's what's maybe that's what's missing. Like it should have been a little more playful earlier than mm-hmm. that scene because it didn't quite work there. I was like, why is she, why is she doing this? Did, did, uh, I, I was I think like most people, I was looking forward to <laughs> that scene. So <laughs> I was looking forward. To, I did, well, I think the marketing made everybody look forward to it. It, it, right. like, yeah, really, it became it a resonated. TikTok trend. So yeah, it resonated with the audience. I saw it with that's for sure. Hmm. So did the ending. The ending with the with what's a is it Bruce? What's the name of the Elsie? El, the character. Oh, the, the uh, robot character. Bruce, I believe. Bruce. Oh, but 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 again, you know, and another, you know, we're already in spoiler mode. I mean, this is like I I love the I love the incorporation of music. Like when she starts, when she starts doing singing. Titanic, ti, uh, Titanium. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god, she's doing the lyrics to Titanium," and I was laughing so hard. Well, her and first song in the in the lab that really got a big response because that yep, no one yep. expected it. There was just yeah, all yeah, of a it was so weird. Right? But even <laughs> even later, she's playing Toy Soldiers on the piano by I think it's Martika. It used to be on this is mm. like me being geeky, used to be on Kids Incorporated, uh, but she had that one hit from like the eighties, like Toy Soldiers, and she's playing it on the piano, and I was like. Oh, I know that tune too. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I just love that how like she's just incorporating all these elements into her, her mind and stuff. Uh, and think finding ways to entertain this kid or, or console her. And I just, I love that aspect of it. You know, I just thought that was. Yeah. And, and when she confronts the two people that she confronts, the neighbor and the kid, those, those scenes really work. They yeah. really they, they were... Well, again, it's like, you know, there is that little bit of campy element. And I don't know if you guys laugh, but that one scene with the detective where he he's like, oh, I didn't mean to laugh. <laughs> 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 I laugh so hard because, I, I, you know, because you have most of these like detective characters and they're just like running the mill. 
And when he's just talking about this dead person, the you dead kid, and he laughs. Later, later when they say they found the ear and it was like 20 feet away from the road, how did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> bad, bad detective work. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't know. I just like taking like little ancillary characters and putting injecting a little humor into it. Things like that were really, I mean, or, just, you know, just things like that where you don't expect it. Because, you know, like you had that really powerful moment where she's having to watch that commercial with her, with her niece or whatever. And, and then it goes off to the, the guy who's over the company. It's like, I forgot what he said. He made some crack about her parents being dead or something. And it was like, mm-hmm. Oh my God, was... <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> I was so out of touch. It was great. Ryan Chang, Ryan Chang did a great job. Oh, oh. my God. He's oh, he's great. He's a great, great. comedian. Yeah, he's, he's a great comedian. yeah so it's, it's great seeing him. But yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I love that kind of balance, you know, or, and, and even like when she's going after people, you know, cause this, like I said earlier, this movie does not pull any punches. We get a, we get a dead dog, we get a dead kid. I mean, it's, it, it, it and it, it makes those kind of scenes kind of, you know, it's just the it's funny dark humor. Dark humor for menacing. Sure. Yeah, yeah. the way mm-hmm. she's menacing them is kind of humorous, you know? Um, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I just, what did you say to the guy in the elevator? I thought that was a blast too. The, the, when she's, when she's talking about, you know, he thought he had it made <laughs> the way he just like set him up. Oh yeah. Yeah. And now again, that, that, that's where it, it definitely felt like, like poison Ivy or those movies, you know, <laughs> where you have this, person who's like setting up the scenarios uh putting the blame on someone else definitely need to think. Just although totally. i don't I'll, although at the same time and she comes out of the elevator like isn't somebody gonna see her coming out of that bloody elevator and they um, do that was hilarious <laughs> i have a feeling that that that's the scene that may have gotten cut what happens to all those people <laughs> maybe well it evidently yeah there were some characters that they were supposed to have died off that didn't well, the two so, lab partners, I was surprised. I'm wondering if the, maybe the lab partners may, might have actually died more gory mm-hmm. deaths in the script. Because I, I wasn't, I, I, I thought they were dead. And then I would they have thought up, they like, were. What? They were all smoke covered. <laughs> yeah, it was like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. But I've been at the, but the campiness of this movie, I, I was like, I don't, anything can happen. I'll be, <laughs> the dog would crawl out of the ground and I'd be. <laughs> <laughs> okay because it's the, the, the you, you didn't i mean you, you took stuff seriously but at the same time you like you kind of enjoyed those campy moments where it was just kind of over the top and crazy yeah. and brian um, i think that's the that's the part where it doesn't register as well for you is that that cross between those two no i was fine i was i i like the the way the film plays with the audience you know that that's what i said i, I would have liked a little more not a serious version of it but i i like the campy version of just the subtle moments of her being creepy of her just sitting Mm -hmm. there while someone's having a conversation with someone else and she's listening and processing. And you don't, you start to wonder like, what is she thinking? Yeah. I think they could have really stretched out a lot of those little creepy queasy moments because she is essentially a stranger in their house and, and they're just letting her, you know, run things. And, uh, I, I just think they could have tapped sometimes, into that a little sometimes bit Sometimes literally. Sometimes like, literally. <laughs> like more of a, yeah, more of a HAL 9000 type of vibe where it's just Ooh. like, of just her sitting there is, was where the, the horror for me worked in and the suspense worked in. Um, and then she just dances and does twirls and stuff. And it didn't really, <laughs> yep, yep. it was a payoff to something that wasn't, I guess, really set up. So I was just like, huh, that, I guess it was just for the marketing. So, you yeah. know. It worked. It worked for beautifully. I, I know. Mean, they got, they got, got in the they context, their, but it worked. They got their box office. Yeah. But it's yeah. just like, as I'm watching it, I'm like, uh, whatever. But, you know, yeah. But I think some of the, the more subtle moments, you know, I mean, I, I think those work where she's just sort of menacing and yeah i don't think it's going to be like the scariest movie you would get all year because it's not really no. scary but it's creepy there are creepy elements it's just unnerving and you know just having that that the way the doll looks right and acts and moves uh but i think it's going to be the one of the more fun movies of the year i, think I did appreciate i did appreciate how grounded it was in like in like current times it wasn't like trying to be like sleeper where they try mm-hmm. to predict what the future will be like and things like that it's like it's relatively now you can you can see this happening yeah. uh you know we have we have heads on tables as as ai now we have you know if she's going to create a full robot robot fine you know it, well it helped that they had you know the 
the software in the house to kind of relate to it, you know, because it's just it's not too far detached from that just that little teeny robot on the not at all, table, yeah, yeah, right, just it moves around, yeah. yeah, there's other pieces of technology. I mean, I and again, I really hope they make that little furry thing that shits pellets because i would buy that, <laughs> that, was, that was but, but, but it's but it, again you have this opening scene where she's got it and all these things all these horrible you know something bad's gonna happen and this this little toy keeps saying these funny sayings and i was like <laughs> but that felt like a real toy you could buy at walmart or something it did. you know because yeah, they have those things and i mean i mean it's like the new version of like teddy ruxman nowadays because teddy ruxman was just playing off of like a tape mm -hmm. but now you have these things that kind of like learn you know and 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 I could see that at some point where, and now, you know, um, it's definitely very pressing because now we have these AI things that can draw anything and oh, no. can write anything. And, and at some point, you know, that there's a rumor that Google has some kind of a crazy AI that's gone, that's become, you know, cognizant of itself or something. So it's, it's, mm. so you have all these things. So there's, and yeah, th this is one of those films where I didn't really, I didn't see that the technology didn't seem so crazy advanced. Well, it, it plays on our fears of that technology. Mm -hmm. Even, yeah, even yeah. it doesn't matter how advanced it actually ended up being because it that's the, going in the direction it takes it is what we fear out of the technology we already have, regardless. Right. Mm -hmm. So that really works. Um, it, yeah. So, all right. Well, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Let's give our score one to five and our favorite scene. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what Brian says. Brian, start us off. Oh, uh, one to five. I'll give it a. I'll give it a. I'll give it a three and a half. Um, you know, I like the technology, the the effects to bringing Megan to life. I think um, those little quiet moments of her just sort of watching and listening and just waiting for you, just waiting for her to go off. I think I like what we got, but I wish they could have prolonged it and really understood what they had and how they how those moments really play with an audience but they work with what we have so it's and it's a hit movie so it's fine uh favorite scene uh i would have to say uh the kid in the park brandon getting run over i didn't think they would go there i actually thought he was he was going to just get a broken arm or something like that but they went full like oh it, man that, that movie, that, was that the movie ma with uh Octavia Spencer, she hit someone with a car. It was pretty much that. It was like, I was like, oh, okay, it, it happened. So, you know, yeah. it was very, as you said, like good son, orphan. Even they even gave her like the little coat and everything. I was like, why does she need a coat? It's not, she, she doesn't get cold, but uh, just for fashion, I guess. But uh, yeah, that whole scene had that sort of good son, orphan type moment, type of feel. And I like that scene. It, yeah. it actually got, it got like a, oh, wow, like out of me. I was like, I had no idea. This <laughs> The, just the ear, shirt. the whole ear, like, Wah. and his one shoe left off. You know, it was, it was... <laughs> oh, and the blood splat too. The... Yeah, yeah, that was that was like okay, all right. I like the ET moment before it too. Oh yeah, yeah, they had the ET <laughs> moment. Plus, they showed his little leg and that body bag or whatever. And I was like, right, wow. right, with the shoe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's that what I was great. saying. This is, I mean, the, 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 you can stretch PG thirteen. Yeah, but I was like, go there, you know. But you normally you don't see him stretching with like a dead kids. Right. <laughs> I was like, wow, they're not really. Well, well, they made him such a shit. So. Well, that's the thing. He's such an idiot. You're kind of like, okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's going to turn out to probably be a serial killer when he grows up. <laughs> Christopher, what? what's your score favorite scene? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't have a kid. Um, nah, yeah, I I really enjoyed this film so much. Uh, I keep thinking about it. I was even listening a little bit to to the score before. We oh, nice. This. Um, yeah, I just this is this movie's a blast from beginning to end. Um, so I don't. Uh, I will give this a four point. <laughs> You're giving us a suspense. Is he, is he frozen? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how high I want to go. Um, all the way back. All the way. I'm going to give. I want to give it a five, but I don't know if I'm. I'm going to give 4.75. There you go. There you uh, go. I really, I really. I was thoroughly entertained, much more entertaining than what I expected, you know? And I think, um, I kind of wish that we, I kind of wish stuff from the, the trailer wasn't so pre prevalent, but at the same time, it still surprised me. Um, as for favorite scene, um, 
I, I, I will say that moment between Megan and, and the little girl in that lab uh, where she starts singing. That song. <laughs> I love that. Uh, right. okay. And it, I mean, it's, you know, it's a beautiful moment building up to that because she's trying to console her. But then she, that, <laughs> the song comes out and you're like, oh, that's so heartful. But then you laugh at the same time. It's yeah. like, what is this song? And and I, I read I read the interview today and they said that, yeah, they wanted something that felt like like part of a Disney song, like part of, you know, uh, part of all these different like kids type songs you hear. And so there's little elements uh, of different types of songs when they created that and it just it feels like something you that you <laughs> hear like on a disney ride or, <laughs> or a disney animating movie um yeah, and then all the board members are crying and the, yeah the, yeah the just, things like grinning ear to ear <laughs> yeah 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 so yeah I, I don't know that that scene really stood out to me because again i i I'd, I'd heard all the camp the campiness of it but i, I went into like oh, okay this kind of surprised me with a little bit of heart a little bit of drama that i wasn't expecting but it still had that right balance for me that that gave it so high. i mean i will say that the ending was a little very predictable <laughs> you know with the you know the gloves or whatever so uh yeah. i kind of saw that coming uh and then i was like wait a minute when did she get those gloves <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't the, matter. That was only that was the only logic thing where my mind was like, "I'll ah, stop thinking, Chris. Enjoy the campiness." So, Doesn't yeah. matter. Doesn't matter. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm in the same camp with you, Chris. I want to give it a five, but I'm holding back and giving it a four point seven five. Um, and for me, it's just I I really wanted more gore. I wanted, and I I can't wait to see the R maybe the version. unrated. I want to give you that five. So, uh, but I definitely want to see more of this. I want to see it again. I'm looking forward to Megan two or whatever. There's a there's at least two ways I can see them taking it. They have set up a couple different things that they can go with. Um, so they they they're good good for them. Um, and the character is just so well designed and executed. The Megan character, good good job. Uh, iconic, I think, at this point. Um, I think she's definitely going to be around and remembered regardless of whatever happens in the rest of the year. Uh, my favorite scene, okay, uh, there's a number of things I could go with, but I'm going to go with the the end of the dog scene when the dog bites, bites them. And not the dog bite. Hear me out. <laughs> but when Megan rises up after that, because she's been chewed on by the dog and her hair is like frazzed out and she's got leaves and all the shit in her hair and just the look on her face and what she says, oh my God, it's the perfect thing. And she just looks, it, she looks crazed and menacing. And it was like, okay, we're in for a treat. I knew at that point shit was going to get good. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we're in for a treat. This is going to, this is going to work. I mean, even when she's just sitting in the standing in the corner of the window, like at, later on when um, they're looking at, it, yeah, it just it's, ah, it just looks so damn menacing just because of that she's uncanny valley. Yeah. So yes. Also, how she can like imitate voices and stuff just adds that extra oh, that, level that of, uh, that of ways that creepiness. Like, oh crap, that's how she can lure people, yeah, to die. I did. I did like the. Tear scene too. I mean, there was a whole lot of stuff I liked. That I was, I, I thought it was preposterous. You know, like where'd you get the gloves? But the whole battle at the end, I, I was down for that. I was, I was all on board. Take it as far as you want to go. This is pay off. It's working. Yeah, and then you, you have that element of like when her face comes off, it feels very um like uh bonic woman westworld yep oh man yeah westworld i was thinking that i was thinking terminator with her crawling and um uh, but uh yeah, it, it we, does feel like it pulls from a lot of different uh, but it works robot movies yeah it works because that's what we're afraid of all those things i mean westworld i guess is the earliest of when we we're well it's not really there's some other ones but westworld really cemented that afraid of technology well you know i i do wait see a wave of sequel but i don't know if they'd have the budget to do it where you could do planet of the megans where planet of the megans oh my god where, where like if if that if the information that that guy stole gets out there and some other company makes them and makes all these dolls and then they all i guess she's in she's killing. in the system somehow right that's yeah, what well, i'm that's, saying that's what they're implying that she's also they're implying in the, but the but doll thing, right? what if that information goes out to a different or company nothing. and they build them stuff and then like all these megan's become you know 
yeah, the, press the, the, you know, become like, you know. Yeah, there's definitely going to be, they're going to do the It's Alive thing where instead of one It's Alive monster, the sequel's going to have at least three, right? So, mm. Well, <laughs> I mean, I guess it's more like the Todd's play. Like, well, I guess it's kind of <laughs> like the, the Chucky series, you know, you yep. have all these different dolls or... But uh, I don't know. There's ability to do that, but at the same time, if it's a bl- bl- Blumhouse film, they're gonna limit the budget on it. Yeah, then. don't make well, two, they... two of them. Yeah, not two. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I think they will limit to three. Three would be the most. Well, you could make different ones too. You know, you know, different versions, different, different versions, yeah, different ethnicities, different different ethnicities. Little, just, little diversity. Yeah. Oh man, I just had a nightmarish thought that they'll fuse it with the Purge movies. <laughs> Stop, <laughs> Brian! How wow. dare you? Don't give him ideas. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Don't give Bloom, Blumhouse <laughs> ideas. We don't need. Ugh, I don't like the Purge movies. At all. <laughs> Man, please don't. Paranormal activity. <laughs> all right, let's get out of here, guys. Uh, Christopher, Brian, thank you for joining me. This was so much fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great start to the year. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's get out. Let's say good night. Good night. Good night. Some magazine.